Welcome to Electron Online, and in the previous three videos, we looked at how heterogeneous catalysts enable certain reactions to occur a lot faster than they otherwise would, and usually they're in the form of a solid that gets introduced into the reaction. The solid, the catalyst doesn't actually uh, react with the product or with the reactants, but they make the reactants react much more quickly to produce the products that they normally produce. But here we're going to have an example where we have a different kind of catalyst. This catalyst actually gets involved in the reaction, but inserts itself in the reaction, and that comes back out, and inserts itself in the reaction, comes back out, and does that over and over and over again. And so it acts as a catalyst. It makes something happen much more quickly, and it actually is part of the reaction. But since it gets freed each time, it can do it over and over and over again. It's actually a catalyst and not part of the reactants per se. So, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the depletion of the ozone in the stratosphere. Up high in the stratosphere, at about a height of maybe 30 kilometers or so, there's a layer of ozone. Now, ozone is actually made up of three oxygen atoms joined together like that. Where did that come from? Well, high up in the atmosphere where we have oxygen gas, which is a diatomic molecule, it will get, get hit by a photon with a wavelength of less than 260 nanometers. Now, the very high energy photons, they actually, get, they actually bump into the nitrogen gas and, and uh, are therefore the energy is then taken away from that. For example, X-rays and gamma rays fall in that category and maybe a very high energy uh, UV photons. But lower energy UV photons, but still with wavelengths smaller than 260 nanometers, Nanometers, which is still fairly energetic, they will, the oxygen gas in the atmosphere will absorb these photons by dissociating into oxygen atoms like that. And then the oxygen atoms will then mix with oxygen gas, the diatomic oxygen gas, and form three oxygen uh, ozone gas. What does that ozone gas do? Well, wavelengths or photons with wavelengths that are longer than 260 nanometers could no longer dissociate oxygen gas when it's a diatomic molecule. So it will continue to go through the atmosphere and actually it reaches here on the surface of the Earth if it wasn't able to get somehow uh, taken out of the atmosphere before it reaches us. And so that's where oxygen or ozone gas come, uh, comes into play. Ozone gas can actually absorb photons that have wavelengths that are greater than 260 nanometers, therefore less energetic than the very high energetic UV radiation. Now, UVA radiation has wavelengths between 200 and 280 nanometers. So most of those are already taken care of by the oxygen gas in the atmosphere, the diatomic oxygen gas, but the ones that have longer wavelengths, which cannot be, uh, which cannot be absorbed by the oxygen gas that is diatomic, can get absorbed by the oxygen gas that is triatomic, the ozone gas. And so all of the UVA radiation is absorbed in the atmosphere, either by the diatomic oxygen or the triatomic oxygen gas, the ozone. The UVB radiation, which has wavelengths between 280 and 350 nanometers, almost all of those get absorbed by the oxygen gas. So you have oxygen gas plus the photon, photon turns itself back into um, atomic oxygen and diatomic oxygen gas. Most of it, not all of it, a very small amount of that gets through. And then the wavelengths from 315 to 400 nanometers, which is the low energy uh, UV radiation, which is known as UVC radiation, none of that gets absorbed by the ozone, and all of that gets through. And that's why when you go outside in the sun, you get sunburn, mainly because of this radiation and the very small amount of the UVB radiation that makes it all the way through. What happens then is when the, ox the, when the ozone is then broken up by the photon into uh, atomic oxygen and diatomic oxygen gas, then they will find each other back in the atmosphere, rejoin, and form ozone gas again. And so this process continues and filters out or blocks that high energy radiation that otherwise would be very destructive to life and to us. So how does chlorine get involved? Well, we have a lot of chemicals called chlorofluoromethanes. Freon is a good example of that. Freon is the chemical we used to use in our air conditions, our refriger refrigerators, to make them work. We now no longer use those because what happens when this gas leaks out of the refrigerator, leaks out of the air conditioner, it's bound to do that, then it gets into the atmosphere, and then in the atmosphere, it will shed off one of the chlorine atoms. Now, a chlorine atom will join with an ozone atom and form chlor chlorine monoxide and oxygen gas, the diatomic oxygen gas. And then the chlorine and the oxygen atom will, will, pull, will, will dissociate, go back into, well, 
dissociate because they will then meet up with another oxygen atom in the atmosphere. The oxygen will form diatomic oxygen again, and the chlorine gas is back on its own, again, ready to come in and break up another ozone molecule. And it can do that over and over and over again, hundreds of times. So one single chlorine atom can, can actually dissociate hundreds and hundreds of ozone atoms, and that's why the ozone layer can get depleted by these chemicals. That's why chlorine here is considered a, a catalyst, because it makes this reaction over and over and over again, hundreds of times by a single molecule. It gets involved in the reaction, again, set, then gets set free again when chlorine, chlorine, uh, chlorine monoxide add, uh, mixes up with oxygen atoms, and then again forms oxygen gas, and the chlorine sets free. And so this reaction just gets, goes over and over and over again, hundreds and hundreds of times, acting like a catalyst in the air. And so in this case, the catalyst does get involved in the, in the reaction. So now we know that in order to be protected, we need ozone gas in the atmosphere, and we need to keep those chlorine atoms out of the atmosphere so they don't destroy our ozone layer so we can live peacefully on the Earth without being burned by the UV radiation coming from space.